Okay, today we are doing a review or for first impressions of the Handtech 1008C, their 8 channel automotive oscilloscope. Hello, Sam from Tool Hut here today. Today we are going over the first usage of a Handtech 8 channel automotive oscilloscope. It's a 1008C. This product is not currently available on my website. I um, probably will not sell it in the uh, form that I purchased it. So before I sell it, I'm going to get a set of I'm going to modify it a little bit. So stand by. During the review, you'll see what I like about it, what I don't like about it, um, and watch our website. It will be available uh, probably at some point on the website, or you can send me an inquiry on the website. So enjoy. Okay, before we get into this, I thought I should make something perfectly clear. I am not looking at the Hantech scope is a replacement for my Pico. The whole goal of inexpensive scopes, in my opinion, is to get guys using scopes or get technicians using scopes in the automotive diagnostic process. Many technicians don't see the value in scopes. They think they're too expensive. They think they take too much time. The goal with inexpensive scopes, in my opinion, is for technicians to understand what they're missing with their scanner. So if this scanner will accomplish that goal, that is what I'm looking for it to do. Eventually, I believe the technicians that start with an inexpensive scope, they end up with a quality scope in the end. This is a PC-based scope. There's several things I don't like about it compared to the Pico, but when it comes to capturing patterns, you'll see how it does. So the goal with this scope is to, the ability to capture patterns and see what you're missing. So understand that from the beginning. It is a very inexpensive scope and you usually with a scope you get what you pay for. Well, the other thing we got is we have a brand new Handtech 8 channel scope. So I'm gonna do a first look on this. I'm going to put in the in, in here I'm going to compare it to the Pico as far as the scope file that we captured on this HHR that won't run. Um, my first impression of it is I like the container it comes in. It's a small compact container. It's got the leads in it. To me the leads are too short. I'm using my uh, Pico leads on it. They work fine. I am probably going to get a hold of somebody at AES Wave and get a set of eight leads for a Pico to use with it. Um, all of the leads, in my opinion, are too short. It is a USB powered scope, which I thought was pretty cool. I've seen a couple of these copies of, I don't know if it's the Handtech or what brand they are, but they take a power supply. This one just takes a USB cord, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to also put in here some of my first use of it and some of the usage of the, of the scope. So enjoy. So we've got our Handtech hooked up to our HHR uh, that's a, that was stalled going down the road. Now, unfortunately, my intention was to give you the pattern off the same connectors in the same drivability situation as the uh, Pico was doing but unfortunately the car decided it was going to start so now we have a running pattern I am modifying the the time base a little bit my first impression of the Handtech scope is that if you're going to use it to capture patterns, to get to use in a scope, I think it will accomplish that process for the money. Like I said earlier, 
I think the leads are too short. They're not good leads. Uh, so I think the biggest improvement you can get with the hand tech, and you're probably going to spend more on the leads than you did on the scope. But I think it would be a wise investment. I'm using this with a set of Pico leads because the leads they came with only come with alligator clips. They got BNC ends on them and then they're alligator clips. It might be good for some situations, not for this situation. So if you were back probing something and you needed a T-pin on it, it'd be great. Um, they're about two foot leads. They're just, in my opinion, they're just too short. I didn't even take them out of the package. So I just hooked my Pico leads up to it and I got it running. The car's sitting here running fine. The pattern does uh, fuzzy up a little bit. If you change the time base while it's running, it does take a minute for it to, to stabilize out. The biggest thing uh, that I'm struggling with it is the ability to save this capture. Now I know you can do a screenshot, you can do recording video, uh, stuff like that, but the scope does not appear to have the software have the ability and I could be wrong it could be user error does not have the ability to actually save this pattern I was able to set up a trigger with it being a, a crank and two cams uh, I couldn't really get it stabilized well but it does have the ability to set up a trigger the user interface is a little to be desired but I don't think it's unusable uh, so in my opinion my first impression of this scope for the money, I think this is a good place to start for somebody that wants to start using a scope. So, that's it. That's all we're doing today. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think. Uh, if you got any questions on this scope, probably have it available on my website uh, within a couple of weeks. Uh, once I figure out what I like about it, what I don't like about it, what needs to be added to it. Um, and realistically, I'm thinking, I don't know for sure, but it's going to be in the five to $600 range. Uh, it'll be a much improved over the way you can buy it. So stay tuned, hit the bell. If you want to be notified as I send out some more videos, comments, thumbs up, thumbs down. Have a great day. I know we didn't get into too much of the usage of the scope in this video. I just wanted to do a pattern and see if it was a usable pattern or not so we will be doing some usage videos in the future probably in the near future this is a tool that we purchased for one of my techs that's just starting out with scopes so if you're interested in some usage videos on the hand tech stand by i'm sure they'll be coming